Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I was supposed to make this video for wet this previous Wednesday but my paints hadn't arrived and I thought I'd wait a few days until they did which fortunately they did. Oh our post here is a, a little bit up and down. Um, anyway and um, these are the paints that I was waiting for I am waiting also for another set to arrive, um, but they haven't. So um, I will be swatching these for you today. These are by Core. Um, there are two palettes, as you can see here, two palettes of six. One uh, palette has earth colors and the other palette is called high chroma and has uh, various hues in it. Um, I'll be opening the boxes for you to see and then we'll do some swatching. Um, I can't wait. I've heard really good things about Core um, and I, I can't wait to try them. I think I, th I have one Core watercolour and I think it's a Pirol red or a Pirol orange but other than that I haven't tried um, any so it's going to be really exciting for me to try them out with you and see what they look like and how they handle and um, if they are if they're a yay or nay. <laughs> um, I'll start swatching in a little bit. The first palette I'm going to swatch is the high chroma palette and I'll open it up for you to see what it looks like. It's in a tin box but not only that the top the cover of the box is I think it's kind of an enamel inside I'm not sure but it feels like an enamel and it's it's like a palette which is brilliant for mixing I am in need of more palettes so that was brilliant and inside they have like a little leaflet which I'll open for you and they also have a very handy little um, swatch card well it's printed but you can get like a vague idea of what the colors are going to look like um, so that's nice and inside there are these six colors that I'm going to swatch for you today I'm going to use the lid as my palette see how that fares and I'll begin I'll put these to one side I'll put this palette here I'll begin with quinacridone gold which I'll be swatching on my Bockingford uh, watercolour paper, cold crest, on which I've done a little swatch card, as I do usually. Um, so we'll start with quinacridone gold. Let's open this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's going to be one of those. Let's try and get the no, it's not going to happen. Oh, it, let's hope it does. Come on. No, it doesn't want to go back in. Okay, so I'm, I am going to put that on there so it doesn't go all over the cap. But that's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to have to use that later. Let's see if this, yeah, scoops back. And let's add a little bit of water. That looks like a lovely, lovely quinacridone gold. I am not going to um, throw that away though. I'm going to keep it because that is a lot of colour. I mean, I'm not going to throw it away after I've finished the um, demonstration of the colours because that is so much colour there. I'm going to do a lot of mixing with that. Okay. They feel really nice in the palette. Let's 
see what they look like. I'm going to make a mass tone swatch and then a diluted swatch. Let's pick up a bit more colour. That's nice. More colour. It glides really easily on the on the paper. And that is a lovely quinacridone gold. Um, now I'm going to dilute it. It's very earthy quinacridone gold, which is a good thing. That's it's nice as well. This I believe has a PY150 in it and PO48. I'll check after I've done this. There we go. That looks nice. It's really nice. Let me have a look. Make sure. Yes, PO48 and PY150. I think I may switch brushes. I'll get my zero, um, my um, number four Da Vinci brush. Next, we have the transparent Pirol orange. I don't know if this is the Pirol that I have. I'm going to open it for you. Hopefully, it doesn't go all over the place. Whoa, that's a lot of colour. Okay, these need careful handling when opening. <laughs> Limited squeezing on the cap. Oh, that looks nice. On the cap, on the tube. Um, let's try that. Whoa. Whoa. That is, whoa, that is intense. Wow, I think I'm, I've done a bigger circle because I've got a bigger brush, sorry. But it's quite opaque and diluted. Oh, wow. is very nice high chroma now I yeah I can see what they mean <laughs> with high chroma um, next before I do that let's see what pigments are in this um, doesn't it say oh PO 71 okay next I have green gold I am going to put a tiny bit. I'm going to attempt a tiny bit. Well, this isn't coming out, which is good. Nice. Oh, now it is. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. These paints are very enthusiastic. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have so much on this palette by the end of the video. I'm definitely going to need to uh, make use of them after. Mass tone. <laughs> oh wow, that is, that is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. That is beautiful. And diluted. Oh, that 
is nice. It's vibrant, but not too vibrant. I've seen PY um, PY129s a lot more vibrant than this, but I prefer this, I think. It's lovely. Um, ooh, cobalt teal. One of, I love teals, and it's a PG fifty. Let's open this without it going everywhere. Hopefully, a little bit there. Ah, <gasps> don't do. Do not know. Do do not continue coming out. Come on, come on. Behave. There we go. This is going to be opaque. I can see it on the palette. Oh, I picked up the wrong brush again. Whoops. Picked up my smaller brush, but we're going to try and make a big circle with it. Very opaque. Looks like it's granulating. Let's dilute it. It's quite darker, I think, from some. Um, Cobalt teals that I've seen. Very aquatic. Some fine granulation coming through. Quite green, quite green. Next one on here is the Quinacridone Magenta, which is PR122. I'm just going to put that down so I can open this. Okay. Oh, it's managed to, oh no, it's still coming out. I should not get it all over the place. The caps seem to be yeah. The thread on the on the um on the tubes it seems to align very well. That's that has no problem. Um that's oh wow that is intense. Very intense. Wow. Okay, yeah, that is, yeah, that is going to be a color only for mixing, I think. That is so intense. So intense. And diluted. I need to add some water, I think. Yeah. Anyone looking for an intense purple pink, this is your colour. That is wow. That is very um, vibrant. And the next and last one from the first palette is called Dioxazine Purple. We all know Dioxazine Purple, PB this is PB23. Oh, 
okay another enthusiastic watercolor my idea behind purchasing this palette as you know I, I'm not very big on vibrant colors um, was for mixing because it, the potential looked good for mixing also paired with the um, the other earth palette that I bought I thought it would be a real nice 12 color palette for mixing yeah nice dioxazine so far some more color in there it's blossoming a little bit there yeah very vibrant don't know if we'll stay like that when it dries but for now very very vibrant and diluted nice a good dioxazine violet I think okay now those are done I'm going to put these to one side and I'm going to open the second palette which is one I'm more excited about. <laughs> it's the Earth Colors. And um, I'm gonna open it for you. Again, inside there is the lid with a palette, a mixing palette and um, a little leaf leaflet and the colors um, which I'll put here I'll switch my water so that I have some nice clean water pick up the right brush this time and start with Naples yellow Naples yellow is PBR 24 PBK 7 and PW 4 so it's got a PVK7 in, which is interesting. Well, what it okay? Okay, Naples. Don't please, please, please stop coming out. Okay. These um tubes have lots of colour in them, like they're full to the brim. It looks like an interesting Naples yellow. Let's see what it looks like first in mass tone. It's got white in it, so it is going to be quite opaque. Yeah, oh, very dull. Very dull Naples yellow. mustard, dull mustard colour okay hmm see it diluted maybe it will brighten up diluted Yeah, well, it's it's almost like a, a sienna or, or an ochre. Not your typical Naples yellow, or well, not my typical Naples yellow, I would say. Quite natural, but not what I was expecting. Okay, 
Next, we have the Transparent Brown Oxide, PR101. No. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. This has, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, that didn't go well. Um, one second and I will be with you. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a dot of our uh, transparent brown oxide there, which I'm just going to let dry, let it dry there. I'm not going to do anything to it because if I start trying to pick it up with uh, with water, it will just spread. So I'm just going to leave it there. Sorry about that. The transparent brown oxide really wanted to be swatched. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my goodness, let me see, this looks really nice, yeah, maybe a little bit more, it looks so granular on the palette, looks so granular on the palette but it looks like it has a fine granulation not a heavy one um still diluted okay It's like a burnt sienna, I would say, ish. Transparent, it's PR101. Yeah. So let that be back in there and behave. Next, <laughs> I'm going to uh, open the Venetian red and pray for me here so it doesn't go all over the place. Oh, I'm going to open it over the palette, actually. Um, okay, so that was that was okay. It didn't go all over the place. Oh, that looks nice. That looks a uh, very opaque, but nice. Oh, that, that is nice. It's a nice Venetian red. I'd say it leans to more, towards more orange than um, some Venetian reds are, can be a little bit towards violet sometimes. Okay. Dilute. See if it will give us a nice pinky colour. I'm sorry about the colour blob there. Um, but if I, I, I try and um, move it, it will just spread. So I'm just going to keep my cool and let it be. I can see it in the future and remember the, uh, <laughs> the enthusiasm of the transparent brown oxide. Okay, next we have sap green. Wonder what mix sap green is. Oh, it's PG36, PR101, and PY150. Should be a nice bright green, perhaps. 
Okay, this one is more well behaved. It's quite transparent, even with the PR101 in there. It's a nice bright earthy green. I wouldn't say it's a natural green. But it's, I would mix it. I wouldn't um, use it as is. Maybe I'd put like a little bit of blue in there. Let's do it in diluted. It has an earthiness to it, but it's got an earthy mossiness to it. I don't know when it dries, I would, you know, I'll reevaluate it, but I'm not sure if I'd use it as is. Anyway, next one up is the indigo. I have paint all over me, and <laughs> still got transparent brown oxide all over me. Let's dilute a little bit so we can apply it. Oh, oh, that's nice. That is very nice. That is a very nice indigo. And more diluted. Oh, that is nice. I like that. I like that blue. Next, and the last one, is Raw Umber Natural, which is PBR7. And being extra careful, oh dear, it's, yeah, it's, oh, no, 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 come on, come on, behave. Let's put that back safely into its place. Oh, oh, that is, that looks nice. Let's see, raw umber, more in mass tone. Oh dear, a wonky circle. And diluted. Ah, oh, that's nice. That is nice. Okay, so there we have it, the, um, the palette with our um, complete two sets. I think I'm going to start from the beginning and start talking a little bit about them. The Quinacridone Gold is a nice earthy Quinacridone Gold. Um, I like it. You can see the PY150 in there coming through. 
in, um, especially when diluted. The transparent Pyrrole orange is, my goodness, that is one vivid and intense orange. That is, yeah. I, I'm not one that would use this, but for some, I, I can respect it. I can respect its, um, its qualities because I could use this in mixing, but I wouldn't use it as is or very, very little of it because this color demands attention. It's like, yeah, I'm on the page. Please look at me. The green gold is nice. It's nice and earthy mass tone and which is, it's, it's nice to have a green gold that's a, a little bit earthy and it is not as bright as some green golds that I know, uh, that I've seen, but I am, you know, I'm still investigating color brands, so I might find something that is even more uh, subdued than this, but this is nice. The Cobalt Teal Blue, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure about. I love teals. Um, I don't know. There's something about it. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure about and I don't know why sometimes you I look at a color and I'm not really sure why something's bothering me about it I might look at it after and think my goodness that is beautiful color but mm, just too yellowy I think greeny and yellowy I don't know I'm on the fence with this which is a shame because I love teals um, Quinacridone magenta, definitely a colour that I would only mix with. This is, again, another very demanding your attention colour. Um, it's, yeah, it, this, I'm interested in what it can mix. Because as is the, um, I'm not a huge fan of magentas anyway, but um, and I use them for mixing primarily. This is just, you know, it's a good magenta. I respect it for that. <laughs> dioxazine purple, a nice dioxazine purple. Um, it's 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 a nice dioxazine purple. I mean, there is nothing uh, really special about it. It's yeah. It's nice. The Naples yellow, very mustardy, very dull, very chalky in mass tone, but Naples yellow is chalky. Um, it's got white in it as well, so it would be chalky. Um, I wouldn't use it as a Naples yellow. I would use it as an ochre, I think or um, not even a raw sienna because it's going to be too probably opaque for that but an ochre transparent brown oxide you naughty naughty color <laughs> you went all over the place um apart from your shenanigans in the uh, in the tube or coming out of the tube you look you look nice You've got a nice fine granulation. This is something I'm, I'm noticing with this granulation. It's very fine. It's a nice um, alternative to burnt sienna probably. It, it's nice. Venetian red, I like it. I like the Venetian red. Um, this is a color I, I, I can see myself using quite a lot. It's um, it's a nice, it's a nice Venetian red, but there's something about it that just you know makes my heart skip a little bit of a beat. I do like this um, sap green, nice sap green, quite uh, natural-ish. It's earthy-ish, but it's not natural enough for me. It's it still yells, I'm a convenience mix, and 
I I need something to to get me to look a little bit more natural. Probably, as I said before, probably would mix it with the blue, or even with a brown. Um, blue and browns bring it down a notch, just set a little bit. Um, it's a good sap green. It's a good sap green to have for for mixing. The indigo is really nice. I like it. Um, it's kind of quieted down now that it's dried. Um, it, it it's going to be like you know a. It's a good indigo color. Again, I'm I'm not sounding very excited, am I? I'm sorry, but um. They're, they're nice colours and the raw amber I like. I really like the raw amber. I think it's one of the better raw ambers that I've seen actually. It's nice. Nice raw amber. Overall, these are nice colours. Um, there isn't anything in particular about them apart from, you know, the transparent pearl orange that is like, wow, in a I respect you kind of way, wow. Um, and the Venetian red, which I like, and the indigo, okay. But they're really nice colours, and they handle really beautifully on the paper. Um, on the palette, I can't know. I don't know if you can see that. They they're almost like it's almost separating. I I think that's the uh, our naughty transparent brown or ochre, but it's kind of separating into chunks almost so it needs a good mixing so the pigments are gravitating together the pigment is gravitating together the pigment particles and so before use mixing would be good um, I would like to try mixing with these if it's okay with you if I would do like a mixing video because I am very interested in how they're mixed because that's the reason I actually bought them for mixing. I didn't buy them because I thought I'm going to use the, the colours as is. Um, I was hoping that I would find more of the earth colours a little bit more exciting but maybe I, you know, in this, uh, in these sets there aren't their exciting colours. Maybe there's some cool um earth colours that um, I might discover in the future and go wow that you know that makes my my heart race um, okay so that is that um, let me know if you would like to see a mixing video I don't know if the mixing video will be next week it probably will be but I am expecting also another palette to arrive one that I'm quite excited about it's a Schmincke Horridan palette, which I bought when it was on sale on Jackson's site. Um, oh, for anyone that is viewing it, to, viewing this video today, just a note to say that um, Jackson's has a paper sale. Anything like sketchbooks or uh, blocks or um, pads or anything. It's, I've just looked at them and I thought, my goodness, I might need to invest in buying some paper because the prices were really good so just just a note to say that um what else ah yes i'm waiting for my schminker horridan palette which i bought on sale from jackson's so it might be that i'm also eyeing some handmade watercolors by two companies one is called esse um, and I found them on Etsy and the other one is a company that I've been um, kind of I, I discovered like months ago and I keep going back to this site I keep building a palette and I keep changing my mind <laughs> because their colors are so nice it's called um, Stone Ground Co and they're in Canada, I believe. Um, and I, I need to decide because I want to 
build a palette and swatch it for you from them. Anyway, let me know what you would like. I can do a mixing video of these, um, or we can wait for the Schmincke Horridum palette to arrive. I think those are 12 colours as well. Let me know what you think of these colours. Let me know if there are any core colours in particular that you enjoy. I hope to see you at the premiere because I love the premieres. I Premieres are my night out. It's my special night of the night when I can meet up with you and talk about watercolours. Um, oh, my awkward bit at the end. If you like this video, please like the video because it really helps. Um, no pressure, but it really does help the channel if you like it to hit the like button. Um, if you would like to see more or uh, more videos by me, um, being less messy, hopefully, um, and talking about watercolors and everything watercolors and paper and brushes and things like that, um, and special curated palettes that I, I'm so desperate to do, but, um, I'm kind of in this wheel of making um, videos about the colours that I'm purchasing because I'm trying to build up like a, a larger collection to actually build the curated palettes. Sorry, I went on a bit of a ramble <laughs> there. But yes, if you would like to um, subscribe, please subscribe. Thank you and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here for uh, supporting uh, this channel and building this beautiful community together. Um, love you all and I hope to see you very soon. Bye bye, bye bye.